you're tuned into the first newscast devoted to the Highland Lakes area. Local team coverage on Tribune Headline News, bringing you the stories you care about now. Hello everyone, I'm Connie Swinney with your headlines. You're watching us on Northland Channel 15. With all this heat, energy officials believe rolling blackouts could strike soon. We have the latest on steps being taken by Perdinalis Electric Cooperative to reduce use among its customers. That story in a moment. But first, she's a certified nurse's aide and had been caring for her severely disabled daughter. But according to Burnett Police, 37-year-old Georgina Chavez Garcia may be to blame in her 9-year-old's death. Burnett Police arrested Garcia on Monday. The Horseshoe Bay resident remains behind bars at the Burnett County Jail with a $250,000 bond. Burnett authorities accuse her of failing to feed her child properly or give her proper medicine, thus causing her death. Here's what we know about this case. A nine-year-old girl stricken with cerebral palsy and epilepsy died on June 13th during a trip to the emergency room at Seton Highland Lakes. The mother, known as Gina, brought her there in a wheelchair. According to arrest documents, the child appeared to be suffering from malnutrition. She weighed 47 pounds. She received food through a feeding tube in her stomach and was prescribed medication for her disabilities. According to documents, in February, the child weighed 59 pounds, just shy of the average weight for a girl that age. Child Protective Services has removed the rest of the children that were inside the household with Chavez, who's a single mother. The official cause of death is pending from the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office. She faces up to 99 years if convicted on the charge. The mercury continues to rise and there's no doubt electricity use could skyrocket along with it. As a result, energy officials are trying to take steps to prevent outages. Perdinalis Electric Cooperative is asking its members to reduce electricity use to help avoid potential service interruptions. Just this winter, ERCOT, or the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, blamed a spike in use for rolling blackouts. ERCOT oversees the state's electric grid. They informed PEC planned blackouts could be coming to protect the grid if use continues to soar. So PEC officials are asking customers to conserve to keep this from happening. Here are some of the tips they offer. Set the thermostat at 78 degrees or higher. Lower your hot water heater thermostat to 120 degrees. Wash clothes and dishes in cold water at night. Turn off or unplug unused appliances not in use. To report service interruptions, you can call the number on your screen. ERCOT manages the flow of electric power to 23 million Texas customers. That represents about 85% of the state's electric load. We'll see what our forecast looks like to close out June and get a peek at July. Details later in weather. We're back. Jared Fields has a pretty heated forecast for you now. Hello everyone. The last couple of days in June should be no different than the rest of the month. And as we start to look into July, it seems we may be in for even more of the same. Now here's the rest of your Highland Lakes forecast for Northland 15 and the Picayune TV. Wednesday, mostly sunny and hot with a high near 100. Calm wind, south-southeast between 5 and 10. And then Wednesday night, partly cloudy with the low around 74. Thursday, again, mostly sunny and hot. Maybe not 100, but we've got a high near 99 expected. South wind between 5 and 10. Thursday night, wind still between 5 and 10, partly cloudy and low around 74. And then Friday, July 1st, mostly sunny and hot, looking to be just like June with a high near 99. South-southwest wind between 5 and 15 and gusting up to 20. And we'll have your complete July 4th holiday weekend weather forecast here later in the week. But it's probably no surprise that right now, it doesn't look like we'll see a change. 
Uh, that's your Highland Lakes forecast. For Northland 15 and the Picayune TV, I'm Jared Fields. Thanks, Jared. Coming up after the break, are you ready for some more derby? We get ready to roll out our latest special segment on the Marble Falls event. We're going to highlight one of the summer's biggest draws, the Andy Roddick Tournament, coming up in sports. We are established, we are qualified, we are certified, we are knowledgeable, we are dependable. We are Ken's Heating and Air, our people make the difference. Welcome back. Let's turn our attention to sports. Here's Jennifer Fierro. The Highland Lakes and Marble Falls especially has been known for tennis for the last 20, 30, and some would say 50 years, and that's because several diehards do everything they can to enhance the love of the sport and pass that on to people who want to play. The officials of the Andy Roddick Foundation have taken notice, and that's why they've had their tournament here for the last three years. The third annual Andy Roddick Foundation tournament was a huge success for a number of reasons, according to officials. Because it was a United States Tennis Association sanctioned event, the tournament drew a record number of entries as well as champs and super champs looking to earn valuable USTA points. Dr. Lawrence Roddick, the director of the Andy Roddick Foundation and the brother of the superstar athlete. Everything's going great. We're just beginning, but we've got some really great players here this year. Um, three kids from Venezuela came up, and uh, I think they plan on come back next year as well and bring in more kids. So. And plus, we got some of the top kids in Texas that just came from College Station. Um, did very well, and actually, two of them just got done winning the Grand Slam tournament out there. So, uh, very happy about it. One of the top players performing at the tournament was Keen Roy of San Antonio, who won his age group 12 year old boys singles. King was ranked number two in the Super Champ division and was looking to take over the top spot. Yeah, I think it's a really great tournament just for just everything, all around tournament. I just love the, the enjoyment and the competition that it gives me. But Roy wasn't the only player who performed well. Highland Lakes tennis was well represented thanks to 10 players. We got some Marble Falls kids out here that, that are doing uh, well from Horseshoe Bay, Marble Falls, and Vernon, Texas. So uh, we're, we're happy to have them. Uh, and they'll also get the, ex the uh, experience of some of the international players and number one players get to see them play. That will hopefully motivate them to get better. Now, as you can imagine, most people would have loved to have seen Andy Roddick at the event, but unfortunately, he was overseas preparing for Wimbledon. Now, we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit of baseball, and that's because the Marble Falls Mustang team hosted a tournament where they welcomed several area teams. Marble Falls did get to play three games. They went Two and one of the event, Marble Falls' lone loss was to Liberty Hill 3-1, to one, though the Mustangs did beat Coppers Cove 3-0, to zero, and of course came back and beat Lano 21-1. to one. That's it for sports. I'm Jennifer Fierro. Connie, back to you. Thanks, Jennifer. Before we sign off, I want to remind you of our unfolding coverage of the Marble Falls Soapbox Classic. Yes, that's right. We have even more fun images from the recent event. All the thrills and even a few spills. But there's one aspect of this community event we're going to share with you soon. The personalities along with the racing, which attracts visitors from around the region to Main Street in Marble Falls. This, this is about says it all right here. Funky farmer hat. This is the, you mean Roman the, centurion. the side of a, of a, of a winner, Bernie, fun, fun, something you wouldn't understand. Funky farmer something hat you wouldn't understand about versus Bernie. Roman centurion. You know, I, who do you think is going to win this fight? Huh? Come on. Where are all the rest of the Indians, Mr. I'm, Mohawk? I, that was a couple of the great personalities at the Derby event, Grant Dean and Bernie Sachs. We'll hear more from them later. We'll be airing the Picayune TV Soapbox Classic Show on Northland Channel 15 in a couple of days, so watch for it. Thanks for tuning us in. For the Picayune TV, I'm Connie Swinney.